Welcome back to Module 4, Confidence Intervals, and this lesson is Lesson 2. It is entitled Confidence Intervals About Moo. Where does each datum lie? Brought to you by the infamous Dr. Dog. You'll recall in our last discussion that we develop a confidence interval on the standard normal curve. Now, the standard normal curve has mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So the confidence interval that we selected was simply a z-score, which traps a certain percentage of data. In this case, we chose to trap 95% of the data. Now, what that means is, is that between 1.96 standard deviations below the mean and 1.96 standard deviations above the mean, we isolated 95% of the data. Now, the issue for us becomes... If we have a standard normal curve with z-scores and we can trap 95% of the data, how might we transition into a normal curve with mean of 20, say, and standard deviation of 2 to develop a lower bounds and an upper bounds that would allow us to trap 95% of the data? Well, in the top curve, of course, the standard normal curve, the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. In the bottom curve, the mean is 20 and the standard deviation is 2. Up in the top curve, these scores down here are z-scores, but down in the bottom, these are not z-scores. These are raw data va datum values. Now, our goal again is to translate what we have done with a confidence interval in the standard normal curve into the normal curve, moving from this special case into a unique case where we have a set mean and a set standard deviation. Well, to start with, we know that these z-scores are going to be important. So if we're going to develop a confidence interval down here for this curve, the z-scores are going to matter because the z-scores are what determine the percentage of data which are trapped. So we would put a z down here so we'd have something minus z times something and something plus z times something to trap 95% of the data. Now, we also know that the mean is going to be important because these curves are centered on the mean. So now we have the mu minus z times something and mu plus z times something. And of course, the actual size of the standard deviation is going to be important. So we have in our lower bounds, mu minus z times sigma, and in our upper bounds, mu plus z times sigma to trap 95% of the data. Let me play with this just a minute in this problem so it might make better sense to you. What we have here, if we ignore equals 95%, we have the general formula to trap uh, a, a, a given percentage of data between a lower bounds, which is mu minus z sigma, and an upper bounds, which is mu plus z sigma. Now, let's, do, let's work through this. Remember, in this normal distribution, the mean is 20 and the standard deviation is 2. We would plug in the mean. So we've got the mean plugged in, and let's plug in our standard deviation. Now we have mu minus z times 2 and mu plus z times 2. Now, since we're looking for 95% of the data, the z-score which traps 95% of the data is a very specific z-score. 1.96 standard deviations below and 1.96 standard deviations above will trap 95% of the data. In other words, we now have 20 minus 3.92 because we would do our multiplication first. And then we have a boundary of 16.08 and 23.92. The idea being that when mu is 20 and the standard deviation is 2, we between 16.08 and 23.92, we trap 95% of the data. Now, what I've done here is illustrate for you that 16.08 is a lower bounds, 23.92 is an upper bounds, and 95% of the data are contained within this interval. Now, we're 95% certain that if we randomly select a datum value, that that datum value will fall in a range between 16.08 and 23.92. We are also 5% certain that a randomly selected data will fall outside this range. Because 95% fall in the range, 5% fall outside the range. Inside the range, we have our confidence interval, 
And outside the range, we have our era, which is represented by the Greek letter alpha, denoted by this little fish-looking symbol. And in this case, alpha is 5%, or 0 0.05. The confidence interval is 95%, and alpha is 0 0.05. We have the alpha, or the era, split in half on each end. We have 5% total. So we have half of it over here, and we have half of it over here. This amount is 2.5%, uh, goes below 16.08, and 2.5% goes above 23.92. Isn't this an incredible situation that you have just developed a confidence interval for the scatter of data around a, mean, a given mean with a set standard deviation? You've done well, Pilgrim, to come so far with so much hair, with so many after it. Now, those of you that look for that line in Mountain Men found out I just had a little joke with that. It's actually in the movie Jeremiah Johnson. Mm -hmm.